Hey, how's it going guys? Jackson here, and today we're going to be doing part one of two of our PC build guide. Hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so this is going to be part one of two of basically just how to build a PC. So in this whole entire part one, we're just going to be talking about compatibility and, you know, size factors and just making sure everything's gonna work out together because that's one of the biggest factors when it comes to building a PC is buying the parts and being sort of afraid that what if my parts don't work together so we're gonna go over that and discuss everything that I could think of that will work out so just a disclaimer if I don't think of anything feel free to you know comment it down below and I'll probably add it to the description or something like that but yeah I can't think of everything but I'm gonna go over anything that I can think of when it comes to building a PC okay so usually where I like to start when it comes to building a PC is just what type of platform are you going to be using? So are you going Intel or AMD for the processor? Pretty much as simple as that. Um, you know, it's kind of based on opinion. I've mostly done AMD my whole life, and then Matt, for example, the other, um, you know, my partner on the YouTube channel, he's always done Intel most of the time. And they're both great brands, you know, obviously if there's only two processor companies, you know, that people really know about, um, there's a reason they've both been around for so long. So. Either one you go with, you're going to like it as long as you make sure everything's compatible and fits your price range. Okay, so like I said, after you pick your processor, you're going to want to make sure when you pick your motherboard, see this socket right here, you got to make sure, is my CPU going to fit in that socket? Each motherboard has a specific socket type. So for example, this one is socket 754, which is some AMD socket. I'm not really too familiar with it, um, but basically, you got to make sure when you buy that processor, that it's the right platform. Like for example, this one's AM1 platform, it's not gonna work. This one I know is AM3 platform, it's not gonna work. This one's FM2, it's not gonna work. That's what I'm saying, is you gotta make sure you got the right socket. And then the other things you gotta take into consideration is, can the motherboard handle the amount of cores that the processor has? Like a lot of, um, most newer motherboards, uh, you know, they should be able to handle, you know, up to eight cores. Uh, no problem, the, that's usually how they make them now, but you can still check and then it'll usually say something like multi-core ready or up to supports up to eight cores or something along those lines. Um, also you want to make sure, can it support the amount of power consumption the CPU uses? So usually, you know, same thing, it'll say how many, uh, you know, watts the processor can be for the specific motherboard. Usually it'll go in, um, you know, pretty standard rates, like it'll say up to 95 watts or up to 125 watts. It's pretty solid numbers like that, nothing's too strange. So keep that in mind when picking out your processor. That's about all you gotta look out for when it comes to picking out a processor, is basically socket type, the amount of cores, and how much power it needs. So that, that's what it comes to with the motherboard also. Next thing in the motherboard we're gonna talk about is RAM. So basically each motherboard will have a certain amount of slots. You can see this one has two slots. So, this one, for example, I think is DDR2. You have four different types of RAM right now. You have DDR1, 2, 3, and 4. So, it basically goes from newest, or well, sorry, it goes from oldest to newest. So, 1 is oldest, and then up to 4 is the newest type. Uh, most motherboards are still using DDR3. DDR4 is kind of a new technology, so it's not quite as uh, common. It's more expensive, so more than likely, you'll be going with DDR3. So, one thing you got to make sure is that the motherboard can handle the amount of RAM going in and then also that the actual operating system can handle, handle the amount of RAM. There's different, uh, you know, if you have 32-bit or 64-bit, depending on what operating system you have, they'll only be able to take certain amounts of RAM. So just do a little research on that. Um, like I said, that's another thing that's, you know, it shouldn't keep you up too much. Uh, it's not super important, but, you know, still make sure that you're getting the right amount of RAM for it. Um, another thing is um, each motherboard can take different types of frequencies. So for example, there is 1866 and there's 1600 megahertz RAM. Make sure the motherboard is compatible with that speed of RAM. So two things with RAM, make sure it can handle the speed and make sure it can handle the DDR, etc. Make sure it's the right one. Okay, so moving on to another part of the motherboard, make sure that when you put your CPU in, make sure that, like I said, you know, you can supply the right amount of power to it. Like some older motherboards, for example, if I was to put a newer AMD processor in here, I might not be able to use this normal, um, you know, four pin CPU connector. Most motherboards will have these, just a four pin connector, which you'll have your main power go right here, which is the 20 uh, plus four or just 20 pins. And then you'll have another four pins going here for the CPU. Some motherboards already need the 24 pins, 
Plus they'll need two four pin right here. So instead of just four, it'll be like eight. So keep that in mind. That's usually only for really um, higher range processors. Like I know even my AMD 6300 only uses four pins. So just something to keep in mind if you're going for a higher end build. Okay, now another thing with motherboards is make sure that you have the right amount of peripheral things, such as, you know, fan connectors, um, when you go to attach your GPU, if you're going, you know, if you're not going APU or if you still want a GPU anyway, I don't know, um, just make sure that you have the right amount of PCI slots. So, you can see this one has one PCI slot that would be for graphics cards, the others are just for other things like Ethernet cards and uh, PCI Express and all that. So you can see this one just has one that would be for graphics cards, if you wanted to, you know, have two of them like an SLI or Crossfire or whatever you're gonna need more than one slot so just keep that in mind when picking out a motherboard you know like I said most newer motherboards and this is how it just is with technology you know usually if you buy them new anything that I'm talking about it'll be a little bit easier to choose from like this is an older motherboard so keep it keep that in mind next thing we're gonna be talking about is what type of hard drive connections do you have so there's two different types as far as I know there's ribbon which will look like this it'll plug in just like that it's really big, really ugly, um, connects to a hard drive. And then now there's SATA ports, which you can see this one doesn't even have a SATA on it, and that's a problem. If you don't, you know, have a SATA port, you're not going to hook up your hard drive if you get a SATA hard drive. So usually only older motherboards will have these. Most newer motherboards won't even come with um, IDE uh, hookups anymore. So, you know, it's mostly SATA nowadays. You can see they're much smaller, and they just, they just look a lot better. Um, you can see, for example, this one has SATA on it, and you can see it'll hook up right in there. So pretty simple, a lot smaller, and just overall easier to manage. You can fit more on it and save a lot of room. And while we're on the topic of hard drives, let's compare two hard drives we got here. So we got an SSD, which is basically a solid state drive. There's no moving parts in it. It's basically just like a big flash drive. It's just a lot faster. Hooks up with SATA just like this right here. And then this other would be um, a SATA power connector, which we'll, we'll get to once we go to the power supply. Now this one, for example, is the same size as a SATA, it's just a smaller drive. This one is actually a laptop drive, but there is a lot of drives that they make. So then if you want it to be, you know, uh, size saving, but you don't want to spend the extra money on SSD, they have these smaller drives, which have the same exact connections, SATA and then SATA power. So you can see, same size. Uh, this, these still have moving parts in them, though, so it's kind of, you know, your choice. And then you can see, here's an older drive, which uses IDE, which, like I said, pretty ugly. Um, it uses that really long, big ribbon cable we showed you, and then it also uses PADA connectors which is this little 4-pin power connector. Um, like I said, don't, they don't, really don't use these anymore. I don't even, it's probably pretty hard to buy one new. I don't even know if it's possible to buy one new, so probably not gonna see these as much anymore. And then of course, which um, I didn't have on me at the moment, there's also the normal size drives, which are the same size as these that are just SATA connected instead. So they use the same type of connections as this drive would and this drive would. So, Kind of your choice in that one, just depending on, you know, what type of space you got, um, and, you know, if you're trying to save space, if you're trying to be faster. There's all sorts of different reasons to get different size drives and uh, different connection drives. Okay, so now on to the topic of more of, like, form factor type things. So, as you can see, we have two example motherboards here. This one is a micro ATX board, which is 9.6 by 9.6 inches. I think that's what it is, but the only thing that was with micro ATX, they come in pretty much all different sizes. So let me go ahead and give you, like, a little size chart here. So a standard ATX board is going to be 12 inches by 9.6 inches. So you can see this one's pretty much square, so you can tell it's not a standard ATX because it would be kind of a little more rectangular, and it's the biggest board that you can get for a normal desktop. Then you have micro ATX like this one. I believe this one is 9.6 by 9.6 inches, so it's basically just the same dimensions as a standard ATX, but instead of that 12 inch side, it just has a normal 9.6 inch side, so it's basically square. Next to that, we have a mini ITX board which will pretty much always be 6.7 inches by 6.7 inches, also square. So like I said, with micro ATX, they really vary on size, but you know, wherever you go, you're going to be able to see the dimensions of the board, so you know, don't freak out over that. Um, and then another thing is the dimensions aren't super important, just due to the fact that um, most cases will say what type of form factor they are. For example, to say mini ITX tower or full tower, or mid tower, so um, you know, like even if it's a mid tower, you can probably take a standard ATX. Just look at the specifications and you'll definitely know. And then the screw patterns will pretty much always be the same on every motherboard. And so, another thing is if you wanted to, you could always just put a mini ITX board like this in a, you know, micro ATX case or a standard ATX case because the screw holes are the same. So, you know, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but if you did, you more than likely could because the screw holes usually line up. 
Okay, next thing we have is peripherals. I'm gonna try to go over this pretty quick because this is just kind of extra stuff. So, um, obviously you're gonna need fans, but these are kind of things you can customize. So, right here we have a four pin fan. So you can see that it has four connections right here. So basically, on your actual motherboard, you're gonna have the fan connector. So you can see right here is a connection for the fan. You can see it has four pins. So four pin will be the most customizable, as in you can change the speed and some other things um, depending on what the fan can do. Um, and then you also will have three pin connectors on the board, which uh, this one doesn't have. But there is a lot of motherboards that will have three pin. But you can also more than likely use a three pin on a four pin, and you can usually use a four pin on a three pin. They're kind of interchangeable. Um, and then there's also this type of connection, which uh, can this one can be good for some cases, but usually for me it's not. These use PADA, so this one is basically the four pins, kind of like what the hard drive would use. And these hook up straight to the power supply, so unlike the four or three pin that hook straight to the motherboard, and um, to me are a little bit more concealable and you can kind of, uh, you know, have better cable management, these have to go straight to the power supply, I don't know why I couldn't get that out. So basically, you really can't change the speeds in them unless you have some type of external control, but usually they'll come programmed to like a good speed to where they're not going to be like super loud, they'll just be, you know, good fans, especially be like, you know, air quiet, or not air quiet. Just, you know, silent fans, and we get just really quiet ones, they'll come programmed with a certain speed, so. These do have some advantages, but I can't really think of any off the top of my head. I just know that if you're gonna have, you know, like headers, for example, like the three or four pins on your motherboard, you could use these instead. Okay, so next thing is, this is another peripheral thing, I'm gonna kinda be going into this category, so. You know, what type of uh, heat sink and uh, fan do you want? So, you can, I mean, there's so many different kinds that I don't want to get too into. You know, there's water cooling, there's normal air cooling, there's, uh, you know, just heat dissipation where there's no fan on it, it's just a really big fins. There's all sorts of different kinds. Most of the time when you order a CPU, it will come with a fan and heat sink. Now, a lot of people, you know, say, oh, just get rid of them as soon as you get them. But you gotta remember, these are designed to go, you know, with it. I mean, they're the bare minimal. Like, they're gonna still do their job, but, you know, not, not as great as uh, aftermarket would. But they will still do their job as long as you're not, you know, doing some crazy overclocking or anything. Um, so it's kind of just your choice. You know, like, if you're trying to, you know, save some money, you know, I would just stay with, you know, the stock fan and cooler. But if you, you know, have the extra money and you want to go all out or you want to overclock or you just don't want it to be as loud and, or maybe not run as hot, you know, go with an aftermarket one. There's all different types, just make sure that it's for the right socket because each one of these usually is designed for certain socket types or like one will be designed for Intel, one might be designed for AMD. There's different types, so just, you know, like I said, when you go to buy it, just make sure it says it's for your socket type. And also, also it'll usually say um, the amount of watts, like, not as in, it's not saying that, you know, if your processor uses 95 watts, like, it needs to be this much, no, it'll usually say, um, up to 95 watts, as in that's how much it's safe to cool at, um, you could use it on higher watts, but it's obviously not a good idea, because it's rated for 95 watts, so, the more than, like, you know, more than likely however much heat a 95 watt processor would be putting off, so, like I said, make sure it's the right socket type, and make sure it can handle the amount of heat. Okay, so last thing we're going to be going over is your power supply. So, basically, you're going to have to power, you know, this whole entire build somehow. So, let's go ahead and just go over some of the parts first. So, first off, you're going to have your 20-pin connector. This is going to go straight under the motherboard. It's what provides pretty much everything with power. Now, usually it's going to be, this one, for example, is just 20 pins. But usually it'll have an extra off to one side, so it'll be a 20 plus 4 pin is usually what they'll say. Um, most newer computers... You're going to want the 24 pin ones, um, although you can still use a 20 pin on a motherboard, like as in I'll still be able to plug it in, like this one, uh, it's really hard for you guys to see, but I could plug it in right now and there's an extra 4 pins just left open. I wouldn't need those extra 4 pins because it doesn't use a lot of power. Now if your CPU, for example, needs extra power or there's just other components that need a lot of extra power, as in um, basically if it's just like a power hungry system, you're probably going to want a 24 pin. But if it's, you know, not, you're, you can easily get by with the 20 pin. Now, okay, now let's go to the next thing, which is on the other side. You can see we have the CPU 4 pin connector. Like I said, there's also 8 pin connectors. Um, these are going to basically branch off and go right over there to your CPU, and that's what's going to provide it with power. Because it kind of needs a little bit of, you know, extra power for itself. Now let's go ahead and check out some other things. Yeah, let's just move that stuff. Um, so you can see these are PADA connectors, the little 4 pin ones I was talking about, kind of like 
what this fan uses. Um, these are, you know, pretty simple. There's not a lot of things that use these anymore. Um, you know, SAT is starting to become a little bit more uh, used, and this one didn't even have SATA on it. I'm gonna have to get one with SATA. All right, and now we got our SATA cable. So this is just a different power supply that I just went and grabbed. So you can see this one has a SATA power cable, which looks just like that, and it would plug into your hard drives or just other types of things, like most uh, CD drives and DVD drives, and there's a lot of other things to use in it. Like I said, PAT is not quite as widely used, so you know, it would plug in, you'd have this one for power, and then you'd have this SATA cable for data transfer. So, you know, pretty simple, and uh, like I said, it's they're a lot smaller and they look a lot better. Um, than doing, you know, PATA with IDE, it's a lot better with SATA and, you know, SATA. You gotta remember, you know, whenever you rate your systems, you know, power usage, it's pretty much going off of, it's gonna add a whole crap ton thinking, you know, oh, you're gonna be using all this extra power. Well, here's how it goes. When your processor is rated at 95 watts, that means it's never gonna go past, not, unless you have it overclocked or anything like that, or it does thermal uh, throttling it should not go past the you know peak power point. So when it says 95 watts, what that means is that 100% load, your processor will be probably doing around 95 watts. It'll probably be doing less than that, but that's basically what it's saying is that it shouldn't go over 95 watts at stock speeds. Because you know, your RAM uses a couple watts, your uh, CD drive uses a couple watts, your DVD drive, I don't even know what I'm doing. Your hard drives and your SATAs use barely any, I mean, just a couple watts once again. Um, and then, I mean, a graphics card, it'll say how many watts also will be maximum put out. So if you have, uh, like, let's just use this one for an example. So you can see we got this, I think this is a 25 watt power, or processor, it's really low watts, but, you know, just for example, 25 watt, uh, processor, and then the, let's say we put a graphics card in here, and that's 100 watts. So we got 125 watts. Both of those, that's 125 watts if that's their peak rating. And let's say we got, you know, some peripherals in there. Like it's in the RAM, in the uh, you know DVD drive, we got our SATA, um, you know, and we got our SSD and all that. You're probably would be fine with going with the 200 watt power supply, and that's you know not even trying to cut it close. That's 200 watts is perfectly fine. Um, you know, I mean, you can argue with me about that, but I'm just you know putting that out there. You really, if you don't plan on upgrading it, I wouldn't go with some huge power supply because you're going to be wasting a lot of you know unneeded electricity. So, I mean, unless you get one that's, you know, a good certification, of course, if you get one that's, uh, you know, like gold certified, you're going to be using uh, most of the power, as in it's not going to waste a lot. So, you know, I, I think it's okay if you do that, but I'm just saying if you're going to get, you know, anything below that, but you're just going to get a lot of extra watts, it's just really unnecessary. Just putting that out there, you know, save yourself some money and don't go crazy on that. Um, so, other than that, though, I think we covered pretty much everything. So... You know, we hope you guys enjoyed part one, and uh, you know, like, like I said, just keep in mind, you know, go back through if you need to, uh, and then um, you know, check out some other sources. But you know, building a computer is really not as scary as it seems. You know, I feel like a lot of people, it's just the idea that you're spending money on it, and that you know, you could easily mess it up, I guess. Which uh, you know, I've I've never really had the problem in all the time that I've been building computers. I've never really messed one up or anything. Um, I have, you know, I, and honestly, I can say I have bought, you know, non-compatible parts before, you know, I've bought things that didn't go together, and then, you know, I've learned from it. So that's what I'm hoping you guys learned from this, is, you know, what, just, you know, watch out and just make sure you're picking out the right stuff, you know, it's, it's not that hard, and you guys can do it, I'm sure. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video, uh, check out part two, because in part two, we're actually going to be building a computer, and we're going to let you guys see every single minute of it, you know, we're going to try to cover just everything possible, kind of like we did here. So we hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you guys later.